Swashbucklers, you're listening to Under the Crossbones, episode number 63. My name is Phil Johnson. Welcome to the show. Thank you for tuning in once again. I always appreciate you coming and listening to the Under the Crossbones show. Episode number 63, fun fact about the number 63. 63 was the number of groats in a guinea in British pre-decimal currency, which I think only goes back to like 1971. It seems like it would be much, much older. But yeah, it's the number of groats, which I've never even heard of. I know guineas, but I didn't know it was composed of groats. But there were 63 of them, so there you go. My guest on the show today is Erica Innes, and uh, Erica is a comedian friend of mine who I've known uh, for years since I started doing comedy, but she is also the writer, director, and producer of a short film called Pool Pirates uh, that I was fortunate enough to get to play a pirate in, and uh, yep, it's a great little short. You can see the short. I'm going to post it in the show notes. Uh, Go to underthecrossbones.com slash 063, and you can see the short right there in the show notes. It's very funny. Absolutely hilarious. We had a great time making it. Um, I will warn you right up in front, uh, during this interview with Erica, there are a few naughty words. I usually bleep them out if it's part of the stand-up portion or whatever. But anyway, Erica was talking, we were talking, and there's some naughty words in here. So if, you got, uh, if you're got, if you listening with kids around, uh, maybe uh, don't listen with kids around and listen to it uh, when you're having adult time. And if you don't care about naughty words, I mean, come on, we're pirates, right? A couple of naughty words should be okay. Anyway. It's been an interesting, interesting week around here since I last talked to you. Um, my dryer blew up, uh, the, the dryer, we dry the clothes in, you know, and uh, I was drying clothes and everything was going well and uh, they were still a little bit damp. So I turned it back on and uh, I noticed I was like, hmm, smells like uh, burning rubber or possibly electrical smoke. And then I saw smoke. Yes, smoke coming out of my dryer uh, and smoke's not supposed to come out of your dryer. Don't know if you're aware of that, but it's not something that's supposed to happen. So I quickly stopped it and unplugged it and let the smoke dissipate. And uh, once it had all cooled down, I got in there. I took the cover off and everything. And the computer in these computers making life easy again, um, the, com- the computer has a big black spot on it where it, it set itself on fire, essentially. So I don't know if it's the computer or the wiring, right? I could install a new computer on myself. Costs like 200 bucks. Not a big deal. Uh, but I don't know if the wiring is jacked up. So... I I don't want to I don't want to put a new two hundred dollar computer in there and then have the wiring be jacked up and fry the computer. So we went out dryer shopping over the weekend, and uh, we ended up spending uh, more than we would have liked to. Uh, but we got ourselves a new dryer uh, that is uh, coming by freight mail. Uh, we ended up ordering it on the internet. Who did you ever think you'd order a dryer on the internet? You'd think the shipping would be insane to order a dryer on the internet, and yet. That's what we've done. Why? Because the shipping was free. I don't know how they can afford to ship it for free. I don't know if it's going to come here by uh, on the back of a mule or uh, if some guy is just – if they're getting like a, an Uber driver to put it in his truck bed or what. But it's going to take like three weeks to get here. So in the meantime, half my clothes smell like electrical smoke because <laughs> they that's uh, that's what they were bathing in apparently inside that dryer. And uh, and uh, so I'm going to have to do laundry at my parents' house or something. Fortunately, they don't live that far away from me. And uh, so uh, I don't know. So we don't have a dryer. That's uh, it's been it, it was a long weekend, long, long weekend of dryer shopping. And uh, if there, I don't like shopping for anything, I don't even enjoy guitar shopping. And if there's anything I would enjoy shopping for, it would be guitars. I don't even uh, I don't I I don't even appreciate that process. I kind of like playing guitars. I like looking at guitars. But if I'm going in to spend some money on something, I don't care. I don't want to shop for it. So (laughs) that was, it was a long weekend, you guys. It really was. But it is a a new week, which means I'm packing to go somewhere. And I'm off to Florida. Uh, Actually, as you're listening to this, if you're listening to it the day it comes out, I am on a plane to Florida as we speak. And uh, I'm going to be out there uh, on uh, Wednesday, October the 26th. I'm doing the uh, Tavolino Della Note in Coral Springs, Florida, which should be very fun. And then Thursday through Saturday, the 27th through the 29th, I'm headlining at the Laugh-In Comedy Club in Fort Myers, Florida, which should be a blast. Be good to get out there, stretch my legs for some 45, 60-minute sets, five shows on those. Yes, there is going to be some new material coming out of that one. I got a new song that's almost finished. I think I might try that one out. It's going to be good. If you're not in Florida and you want to see me some other places, you can, of course, go to uh, underthecrossbones.com, click on the tour dates button. That will show you all the places that I've got coming up over the next few months. Uh, On uh, November 4th and 5th, I'm going to be at the Joke Room in Bakersfield, California. November 8th, I'll be at O'Malley's in Mountain View, California. 
And then it's after the, the the hinterlands, the cold part of the country. Uh, Friday, November 11th, I'll be at Rookie Sports Pub in Stevens Point, Wisconsin. Saturday, November 12th, I'll be at Cuckoo's Comedy Club in Schofield, Wisconsin. And then Thursday through Saturday, November 17 to 19, I will be at Zany's Comedy Club in St. Charles, Illinois. That's at the Pheasant Run Resort. It's, uh, I haven't been to that Zany's yet. Looking forward to it. It's going to be fun. So uh, you can always come out and see me jokes and sing songs and do those things that I do for money. You know, it's going to be fun. If you're digging the show, and I hope you are, make sure you join us over on Facebook slash Under the Crossbones, Twitter slash Under Crossbones with no the. And, of course, like I said, you can get all the show notes for this episode, links, videos, uh, all that kind of good stuff at underthecrossbones.com slash 063. If you would like to support the show, you would be awesome. And you can go to uh, underthecrossbones.com slash support, and you can uh, there's a little PayPal box. You just drop uh, however much money you think is worthwhile in there. Say equivalent to a bottle of rum, maybe, uh, and uh, and that's real easy. There's an Amazon banner. You click that little Amazon banner. You buy yourself something nice because you deserve something nice, or a dryer. Maybe buy yourself a dryer. Ugh. And uh, and you click that banner. You buy yourself something at Amazon. Amazon sends me a little bit of kickback. Thank you to everybody who has been doing that. I've been seeing uh, seeing some pennies from that, so that's nice. And if you want to be a sponsor of the show, if you got a product or a service that you think a pirate audience would dig. Uh, you can be a sponsor of the show and it's real easy and it's real cheap and I can hook you up with that. So again, that's all under the crowd.com slash support. All right. So we're going to get into this interview with Eric Innes. And like I said, and we'll tell you about the short and all that kind of stuff as we go in, but it's very funny. Erica and I have been friends for many, many years now. Uh, I think since we both started doing comedy to a decade ago, maybe. And, uh, the, the short itself is about pirates that invade this lady's backyard pool. And uh, we shot it over a couple of days a while back and is super funny. And you can see the entire short at underthecrossbones.com slash 063. I'll have it embedded there and you can check it out. All right. So this is uh, super fun and a little bit dirty. Here's my interview with Erica Innes. Enjoy. So we've known each other for years. Yeah. And uh, we I go, just realized it's a really long time now. It has been a really long time. It's been... Probably 10, 11 years at this yep. point. Yeah. So. Holy crap. Yeah. Oh, man. We're getting old. But uh, yeah, so you did this uh, uh, short. When when did you do this short, uh, Pool Pirates? I did Pirates? that short. Oh, that was good. Did you hear that for the sound? I just like mashed my can. Oh, that's good. Sorry, microphone. Um, I, uh, I did that in, it was either 2008 or 2009. Okay. That Might have been right. 2009. Yeah. It's on IMDb. Right. We could look it up, but yes, okay. I think so. <laughs> oh, wait. Might not be accurate how it's posted. But yeah. Okay. It's about that. But yeah, so it was, it's uh, it's really great. Uh, for my listeners, I've seen it. I'm in it. I know what it's. But for the listeners, give us the short synopsis, which uh, could pretty much be a log line. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know if I can make it like all log line snappy, but it's basically shipwrecked pirates that have taken up uh, living in. This lady's swimming pool. Right. Because they don't have their boat anymore. I like it. That's, uh, as soon as I heard the premise, I was like, oh, that's that's awesome. That's so brilliant. Where? Why a pirate film? Did, did you come up with the idea and just went for it? Or were you, I mean, you, I know you're, you were the nerd queen, so pirates probably <laughs> figure into your process I just, somewhere. I always like pirates. I would say in a general way, like the way a lot of people do, like, ah, and I'm going to put on like these pants and be uh -huh. a pirate. Like if you're like, tell me every pirate movie. I'm like, well, you know, I saw Captain Blood and then, you know, uh -huh. I know some, but not a ton. I just always liked them, like the pirates, um, but not, probably not like a real actual pirate. Sometimes people bring that up. Sure. Yeah. I mean, like the the version that we've evolved into like the fun movies right. where you're like that pirate would be like a cool person to know, not like I yeah. better watch it or I'm going to get stabbed right. <laughs> or like if you're going to get stabbed, you can quickly figure out like the morality of the person. So you're like, yeah. but he won't stab me because we'd be pals. He's right. going to stab. <laughs> he's going to stab like the douchebag that we don't like. So I think he's going to be on my side. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, that's, that's always one of the dichotomies I end up talking about with my guests is like, okay, these were horrible people. Especially when I'm talking to historians and things like that, they're like, "Yeah, they were horrible people, but we changed." Every, and it, I mean, you bring up Captain Blood and all those. It was really those movies that sort of turned them into the the handsome rogue that really means to do well, you know. Yeah, kind well, of I character. actually I actually have a comic book, a pirate comic book I got, and it changes the thing. It's it's like I think it's Tim Yates. Where it's somewhere in the house, but I cleaned up, so I don't know where it is. But anyway, it's like this cool graphic novel, and it's about a young girl who decides she wants to be a pirate queen. And uh -huh. it's just, I, I think it's great because there's just all this, this 
stuff that taps into folklore. I think when people say sure. I like pirates, they mean like the mythology and the folklore and like right. the the cool legends that we've come up with, not like you know the insane <laughs> asshole who like right. mowed everybody down on a yacht with a machine gun. Like <laughs> no, I mean that's not. That's not it. What yeah. it's about. <laughs> yeah, and so and and your film really comes at it from that perspective. So when you came up with the idea, how long? Tell me about the process of getting that film made. Uh, that was really hard you to make. You bootstrapped that thing like crazy. Yeah. Okay. So I'd never made any kind of film, and so I was like, I was like, well, I mean, it's it's so short. It's like five pages, <laughs> and this and that happens. Like, okay. Yeah, like what? I'll just get my friends. We'll just film it, uh-huh. and like I'll get like kind of like another friend or acquaintance that I've networked with, and uh-huh. like they'll do the filming. And so, I think, with the exception of one thing, it would have come out as like a kind of a fun movie that uh-huh. me and my friends made, and they're like, "That's cute," <laughs> but and that we had fun making it. Let's like all show our friends, and this is cool. Sure, but. Yeah. One thing happened on the first one that was really bad. So I'd never run any kind of film or really like managed a big project. And uh-huh. so that project, even the first time through, was kind of big. It was like it was like fifteen people at least okay. for the first the first time I tried to make it. I tried to make it twice. Right. And I, I know I ended up in the yeah, second you were version of this. The I, second I heard one. part of that story. Okay, but, so yeah. what happened was this guy wanted to do the filming because he wanted um he wanted to like have st- something cool for his reel. Okay. You know, and it's like the chance to film a short yeah. for someone. So we sat together and I showed him the storyboards. And so he said, I have input. Like this story would be better if you told it this way. Okay. So I don't, the way he like presented it, it was sort of like confrontational, but I, I mm. wanted the input. So I was like, so we went over it and then I said, well, it needs to be this way because that's how I'm going to do it. So if you're cool, like, you know, join and we'll keep this idea and that idea that right. you had. Uh-huh. And he said, well, give me the storyboards, I'll make copies. And I said, this is my only copy of my storyboards. I really need you to, like, not lose them. And he's like, well, you've done them wrong. Let me, like, let me, like, fix them up. And uh-huh. so I actually was like, you know, I've never made them. And they were, like, stick people sure. in boxes. Yeah. And, like, there were too many of them. Like, you can't have, like, 200 shots. From... I didn't really understand it. I was like, this is, oh. It's all <laughs> blinky. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You have poltergeists in your apartment, apparently. I think that that light's about to go. If yeah, it does, I'll have to bring If you're listening, the lights are over. flashing in yes. here. We don't know why. Yeah. Oh, well, I was watching Stranger Things, so it was creeping us out. Okay. When it was. <laughs> anyway. All right. So, so he, uh, he showed up the next day, and he'd thrown away all my storyboards. And ah. he'd remade him, his own storyboards. Okay. And um, I said, oh, it's okay. I remember what I wanted. Okay. And he pinned up his storyboards and started setting up the shots for what he wanted. Uh-huh. And then it just, he was fighting with me on every shot the mm. whole day. I didn't get one shot that I wanted. And were they significantly different shots they from what you had They were insanely of? different. Okay. I, I was like, I don't want that shot uh-huh. at all. Like, I, w- I think that that's an awkward angle and I don't okay. like it, don't get it. Right. And we would, he was arguing with me. And then I was like, I was like, this is not fun. Like, I'm fighting for every shot. And we fought so much for the shots. And then he would just ignore me and do the oh, shots he wanted. Geez. And then I didn't know what to do. Because I uh-huh. I usually luck out where I work <laughs> with people where they're, like, kind of agreeable. Right. So I didn't know what to do. And I remember, you remember Rob? He was there. Yeah, yeah. Um, Rob uh, said... I've been in management. This is actually like a management challenge. The okay. first time through as yeah. a manager that you have to fire someone is really <laughs> painful. So he said, just take it as a lesson of what happens when you can't bring yourself <laughs> to fire someone that needs to be fired. Yeah. Because if I'd said, you threw away my storyboards, get the fuck off my set. Right. You're done. Yeah. Like right away because that was horrible. Uh-huh. The rest couldn't have happened, and I could have asked this other guy there to do the filming because sure. I'd rented the camera and we had all the stuff we needed. Right. But this was the the plus to this happening. That happened, and it made me realize that I really like was not doing it the right way. Okay. Like uh, stuff I didn't even know was a thing. Like y- if you want the pool to look even all day uh-huh. for the shot, if you watch the movie, it looks like. It happens about the same lighting. Sure, yeah. For most of it. And that was a big, I remember that was a big concern the whole time we were doing it. Yeah, and yeah. but the, I got people, I was like, oh, I need to do this, mm-hmm. but I don't know how. So that was like the start of like going, 
you know, who can you hire that like <laughs> that knows, knows what they're doing? <laughs> that knows what you don't know. Yeah. And and I'm like, what things do I need to know that I don't know? Uh huh. So I can hire someone who's gonna do it right. Right. And so I just started reading everything. Okay. And then I was like, I think if I got these key positions filled, we could kind of get away with the rest of it. Uh huh. And uh, that's how that's how that started. And then it just kept getting more insane because everybody <laughs> heard it and they're like, oh, I just want to be part of it. So oh, okay, I had like, yeah. I had like two grips. Uh-huh. I didn't. They just <laughs> heard that we were making it and they're like, can I be on set? Like, it's good for my resume. And I was like, yeah, you can come. And then uh-huh. they actually did with the the gaffer asked them to do yeah. like as, as asked. And he was like, wow, these are like good volunteers. And so <laughs> like, it was kind of cool by the end of that. There were 35 people. Yeah, it was a fairly large. I was really surprised when I got there because I think I, I got there for the second day of shooting. And because uh, I think it was two days altogether. Yeah. yeah. And I got there, I was like, oh, this is a lot of people for a project this small. <laughs> you know? Well, because so it was uh, the DP and then the the gaffer, uh-huh. they needed to do all this crazy lighting stuff. Sure. And they had to do it without plugging any lights in so nobody electrocuted uh-huh. themselves. Right, yeah. So this is just stuff that I didn't originally think of. Like, yeah. I just, it was one of those things where I'm like, I've hired the right people. They're like, we thought about it. Right. You can't kill everybody. You need to use this <laughs> and this and this. And they're like, they're like, there's no production insurance. There's all these things they learn. I'm like, what's production insurance? They're uh-huh. like, don't worry, it's an indie shoot. And I'm like... <laughs> Now I'm like, oh, that's why they don't like you to shoot by a pool. That's why the pool is so expensive. Mm, yeah. There are all these things about it I didn't even think about. Like, uh-huh. also, where are you going to get four pirate outfits? Right. So I found Which I somebody. know was another huge concern because don't get them too wet. Don't get them too wet. Don't get those. And we're in a pool. Yeah. So they were getting wet. Well, I, I think some stuff was fine to get wet, but mm-hmm. there was one outfit that could not get wet. Right. And that's why he had to stay in the boat. Oh, The okay. little floaty boat. Gotcha. I was yeah. like, that's made of leather. So, oh, okay. so I was, it was hard because there were all, it was just this, when I thought of it, it uh-huh. was just this funny, surreal short yeah. and it was just going to be my friends and some toys right. like floating in the pool <laughs> and they'll have juice boxes and we'll make this weird, goofy movie. Yeah. And then I'm like, no, did you want the pirates to look like pirates? Because uh-huh. this person should have leather and this guy should have this and yeah. they need to have this. And what are the pool toys? And I'm like, okay, fine. They're like, oh, but you also have naval officers. What are they wearing? Sure. Yeah. They need to match. Uh-huh. What? They need to match. Ah, shit. Like, yeah. they, don't, they don't match. I was like, there are two officers close enough. We're done. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> like, and then uh, there's just little things you don't think of. Like, where are you getting the cannon? Right. Yes. That like, awesome, tiny little cannon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was not that easy to find. Um, but what was neat is that movie showed how many people love pirates. Uh-huh. Because I would basically go, I'm making a pirate movie. Yeah. I need a miniature cannon. And then this is the weird thing. On off, I did it off Facebook. There uh-huh. were people who were like, oh, we, we reenact pirate stuff. Like, oh, sure. Who yeah. has a cannon? Yeah. We we have three. Which, which, <laughs> which you know? And then... Um, a bunch of people were just so excited about the idea. They're like, how can I help? Uh-huh. And I think that's how I got so much good help because yeah. there was people who were really excited to just do something. Like like uh, two friends wanted to see if they could do the catering for it. Oh, okay. So <laughs> like all the ama- – it was actually pretty – I was told it was really excellent um, food, especially for a shoot. Because yeah. the gaffer and the DP who've done a lot of indie shoots were expecting a total – goat fuck where they <laughs> where they put up with our indie bullshit which right, is yeah. like code for like you don't know what you're doing yeah which that was the first one and i felt so bad about it that the mm-hmm. second time through i was like i was like okay now i get what i did wrong so. yeah i think the interesting thing about that is that you didn't have to waste the project because you got to do the same film again but do it in a better more appropriate way it was so hard though to do it like i just went home from that and i like i just like burst into tears like, we got in the front door and like rob was just waiting uh-huh. he was like here it comes because uh-huh. <laughs> like, ah, you know like we couldn't use it the first one yeah yeah and yeah. then people were mad that i was redoing it because they're like oh i don't want to do it again oh okay some yeah people did it and then some people were like well, I want it released anyway, uh-huh. and I had to be like, "No, no yeah. I'm gonna redo it properly." Yeah. And then they, they, some people felt bad, like, "Why, why?" Like I put in effort. And I'm like, "I know you put in effort. Yeah, I think I'm it so was, sorry. It's not you. It's yeah. I'm so sorry <laughs> that the person I hired for camera work just kind of 
was a total dick bag. And in, and in something, <laughs> in, in a project like that, one person can screw up the whole thing. Oh, actually, that was, because it was my first one. Yeah. It was, it's so true. Like, like if the director of photography for the, the one that I kept, that I, you know, made with you guys and yeah. everything, um, had just, just like, accidentally been half an hour late or an hour late. Like, right. sometimes, well, you know how it is, like, if you run a show for comedians yeah. and it's not, like, this... It's not in a really fancy club. It's like a show that's in a bar. They're like, right. well, I'm a big deal. I'll come like an hour late. Right. And then yeah. you're like, yeah. really? Yeah. <laughs> like, and it still works kind of. Yeah. You can put them up. Like, I just imagine like if, if the people for a film did that. I'm like, there goes your, your day. Totally. Oh, yeah. That could totally mess everything. And the, the DP that you did have when I was doing it was fantastic. I don't remember his name, but he was great. Paul, uh, yes. Paul, I think Nordine is how you say it. I think so. Yeah. He was really, really great. Uh, he's amazing. And if I make another movie and I could afford him, I would get him. Yeah. He actually was one thing that was neat about that project was people liked the script. Uh huh. So they would agree to work at a more affordable rate. Right. So, uh, I know that well, that's why my bandmates, Work with me because <laughs> <laughs> I don't pay them enough, but they like the music. But uh, I, I remember there there was the uh, there was the scene where you had to float the camera out across the pool. Yeah, it was terrifying. Like every, nobody wanted to move. Oh, and then here's the thing. <laughs> here's the thing. I said you don't have to do that. Uh-huh. I don't have any shots that call for like put expensive equipment in the pool and <laughs> yeah, hope right. for the best. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I think it's neat you have it on the side of the pool. Uh-huh. Like, thank you for doing that yeah. with your fancy camera gear. Like, that's all we need. Right. And he's like, nope. And then he just, I'm like, well, I remember, uh, I said, well, I'll let you decide if you want to do that shot. But give uh-huh. me a sec. I need to go to take a break. So I took, a, I went to the restroom. Uh-huh. And when I come back, I came back to the DP doesn't have his pants on and is in the pool. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And I'm like, what just happened? <laughs> yes, I remember it. Yeah. And then, he, then, he, then I'm like, okay, the craziness is over. And he's like, Joe, you get on that floaty toy. Yeah. You know, the one that looks like it might just <laughs> yeah, fall right. right over at any yeah. second. And we're going to pull you backwards across the pool for this shot. And uh-huh. I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah, it was, I mean, it, it, we're... I don't think there was any action in that scene necessarily. It was just a sort of a floating shot towards whatever you were shooting. But I, we were all, cause we were all in the pool too. And we were just like, Oh God, don't move. Don't, don't move. Don't, don't move <laughs> the water. So don't move the water. There's an expensive camera near the water. You know, <laughs> I remember for one shot, we were losing sunlight. Yeah. So one of the pirates had to swim in the sunlight at an angle. Oh yeah. <laughs> I was like, swim so you stay in the sunlight. Right. And they were like the worst instruction. I was like, this is so hard on the actors. They were all so nice. And then, and then like, if you asked like what I could afford to pay, I was uh-huh. like, you guys are amazing. Yeah, right. <laughs> it, it was, I swear it was because you get to be a pirate. You're like, I'm going to be a pirate in a movie. I will put up with this ridiculous shit. It's, uh, totally. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, you when you, I think you had paste, posted on Facebook or something and you were like, I need one more person to be a pirate this weekend. And I was like, ooh, 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 ooh me. Because I was in town that weekend and it totally worked out. And who's going to turn down a chance to dress up like a pirate for a weekend uh, and have it be, you know, filmed for posterity? <laughs> yeah. And then like I have it now. I think I didn't realize it was marked as private, but I have it so you can share the link. Oh, good. Yeah, because so. uh, everybody listening to this is going to thoroughly enjoy it. Yay. Uh, yeah. And no, I mean, there were so many neat things that happened for that because, like, I really, if you saw how much it cost overall, uh-huh. it was not really very much compared to, like, what we what we got as a yeah. film. And it was just because so many people were like, well, I'm, I want to donate or, like, I will work for less mm-hmm. because it's a fun project. And yeah. it, was, it was, like, really, like, I was flattered that people wanted to be in it so much, you know, or do something for it. Like my friends catered the whole thing. Uh huh. Like they only had a hundred dollars to get all the food with for oh, two wow. days. To for feed those... thirty five people or yeah. however many were there. All the people that were there. <laughs> and then there, they had those like really cool like serve yourself like homemade soups and like yogurt. Yeah, and oh I remember it was the, great food. Yeah. yeah. That's it that's the, the that's what I remember most from any set I'm on is uh how good the catering was. <laughs> well, I think I got it from my mom. My mom's Armenian, uh-huh. and like she thinks food is like really important for gatherings. Sure, so I yeah. was like, if 
if you're going to have them be there and like sit in a pool or put their camera <laughs> in a pool or just be like this outrageous day, yeah. uh, you should really make sure the food is good. Right. Because like, you know, if you go over and you see like a nice table of food, you're mm-hmm. like, you know, you're like, oh, they're trying. They're you know? trying. Yeah. <laughs> Not just pizza or something. <laughs> yeah. Although I, for my third comedy album, when, when I did the, I did a photo shoot in here with all my friends. Okay. And they just came and helped uh-huh. just to be nice. Like, it was all artists and stuff that yeah. came over here. Like, I was going to try to get us, like, cool food. Uh-huh. But they're like, nope, we want pizza. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I ordered it, and I was like, oh, man, really? <laughs> like, they're like, yep, pizza. And I'm like, okay, what do you want on it? And they didn't even want anything on it that was fancy. So like, <laughs> like, half the room's like cheese. I'm like, oh. <laughs> Fine. You guys, Fine. You guys aren't taking my generosity enough. Yeah. <laughs> well, because I mean, they did it. I got professional photography uh-huh. and a bunch of people to model, and mm-hmm. they helped me just to be nice. And I'm like, well, I could at least buy us a really nice dinner sure. to yeah. help, you know? Yeah. yeah. And that one was uncomfortable too. I had chain mail on for seven hours, and <laughs> they had to wear unicorn masks and stand. <laughs> weird positions it's like i can't have it just be normal i want to say i've seen that picture already have i seen that picture already? um yeah i think so we've edited it some sense it's going to be the album cover but yes it part a version of it was used for my flyers oh yes okay i have seen it yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a great picture um and it looked fairly involved so but uh, yeah that's good. so how long did how long was it from i have an idea for this film to you know taking it out to festivals and things like that um i would say it was like Half a year I had the idea, okay. and nobody wanted to film it. I would ask oh, okay. people who knew how to film stuff if uh-huh. they'd want to work on it, and they would just kind of be like, uh. And I didn't <laughs> know why. Yeah. I mean, I do now. Uh-huh. They're like, it's in a pool. Like, no, I'm not putting all that gear near a yeah. pool, and I don't want to light it, and uh-huh. I don't want to, like, just no. Now right. I'm like, I'm I'm so lucky that everybody was excited. Uh-huh. But, uh, yeah, so, so uh, yeah, about six months. That's not bad, really. And then that was for the first time. Uh-huh. And then when that didn't work, it was like, I was like, I'm making this movie. It's going <laughs> to happen. And then that was like another month to two months. Uh-huh. And then, yeah. Yeah, that's not too bad. I mean, it can take it quite a while to get those things done. I was uh, surprised. And I know the, I mean, you were doing that in the Bay Area, not here in L.A. And uh, I was surprised that you did get that much top-notch talent for as little as you got it for. Uh, there. I mean, here yeah. in L.A., everybody wants to work on something all the time, regardless of what's happening, for the most part. But up there, it's a smaller film community. I think that's why it's more affordable. I think here, the rates are higher to do anything. Oh, really? Well, I mean, I mean, think about it. Like, it's L.A. If mm-hmm. you went to someone and said, like, can I film in your backyard? If you're a TV show, they can easily ask for, like, I don't know what the going rate is, like, yeah. depending on what the setting is. You mm-hmm. could be like, sure, 2000 bucks right. to be in my backyard. And, yeah. you know, the second that happens, like, like, I, like I'm like, I can't afford that. <laughs> like, the whole reason that movie was possible uh-huh. is, is Rob's friends. Uh-huh had a house with a pool and they were like, okay. we like the idea of a bunch of people as pirates in the backyard right. for a whole day. And they knew <laughs> they'd done like theater work. So they kind of knew what it would be. Cause I'd originally planned to try to set it up. So nobody is in any part of the house except for one area. Right. Yeah. But that's not how it was. And like, they actually set it up. They're like, no, 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 that's not reasonable. Yeah, you can go, have this block and this uh-huh. block. That's yeah, that's fantastic. Now, how did I mean? Did you audition the actors? I know you didn't audition me. Oh, you said I, show up because I didn't. But I already I didn't have knew much you. To do except to drown. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> I already knew you. I was like, yeah, he would make a great pirate. Uh-huh. And he likes being a pirate. Like it was already. It was like a shoe in. It's yeah. not like you know. <laughs> but how did you find the other folks? Um, and did you audition them? I and- actually used. I think it was L A. Ca- not L A. Casting. S F Casting. Mm-hmm. And I put it on. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. It was hard because I knew I couldn't. Like, there's nobody who worked on it where, like, uh, like it, I could afford to pay, like, the going rate for right. that level of talent. Yeah. And so it was really hard because, like, I, as a comedian, I'm sure you know this, too, like, you know, from, from your work in comedy and music. Uh-huh. Like, if someone's like, could you just, uh, you know, do this for the exposure? Like, it's just, <laughs> it's just like, fuck. You like I know, and we all go, yeah, exposure, whatever, yeah, blah blah blah. blah. Yeah. yeah, like like where what what place can I cash that in? You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
you know, or someone's like, like, I'll give you like $10. And you're like, you know, I respect you. And you're like, yeah. so it was really hard to figure out how to be like, I really want to make this and uh-huh. I want to pay you, but this is all I can afford. Right. I just yeah. kind of went with that angle. That's a good way of doing it where you go, here's, here's what I've got. You don't have to do it, but if you want to do it, let's do it. And I would you make know? a point of saying, I know it's like under the uh-huh. rent you could get, but for some people it wasn't that bad. Cause uh-huh. like, actually like I noticed here in LA, like they don't, People who do creative, like, film-related stuff, if they're the kind of person who will go indie, mm-hmm. they they know that somebody doing an indie project, even if it's, like, fairly well-funded, mm-hmm. it just doesn't have the kind of, like, you know, bank that, like, sure. if you're on some well-known TV show or film like that. So they, right. they actually have different prices, usually. Uh-huh. And just better expectations. and Yeah. yeah. I mean, so, like, you're not going to get someone who comes and gives you, like, their top rate. Like, if I'm like, how much for you to do camera work for me for a day? They're Uh not going to, they're going to say, what's the project? Who's it for? And the second I'm not mentioning a big, I'm saying, me, my friends are (laughs) doing it. They're not going to be, like, $1,500 for the day. They're going to ask questions about the project. And then if it sounds fun, the rate kind of comes from the person Uh based on that. That's how I've seen it kind of done. Yeah. So, they're like... I can put up with you for this much. That's kind of how I think of it. (laughs) I know a lot of people like that where I should be charging them to put up with them. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Look, if you want to do this, we're going to have to, there's going to be money involved. Well, I, Uh, yeah, I mean, I I think like it is flexible because it is based on how exciting it is for someone. Certainly. Yeah. Like, I mean, I mean, I don't know. I, I still feel really lucky. I, I auditioned people to answer your question. I actually got a room to audition people oh, okay. up in San Francisco. Uh-huh. A lot of people could go. Well, I didn't think about it. So, again, like this is all the like there's a million things you don't really think about. You're like, oh, I'll audition people. Uh-huh. And then you're like, how are you going to audition <laughs> yeah. them? And I'm like, in my apart, like, that's not sketchy. Could yeah, you right. come over to that's, my apartment? That's the story of sketchy. Is yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, there's, it's not a, it's some of the scripts where people want you to audition in their apartment. It's pretty yeah. creepy. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. They're like bikini modeling my apartment. Yeah, right. And you're like, oh no. So, um, yeah, I just I just got a room up in the up in San Francisco. I forgot where it was, but there was a place that like helped indie productions. Oh, okay. Like like you could kind of rent the space or okay. you could reserve it. They uh-huh. actually like kind of like did a thing where they gave back. That was the neat thing about making that movie is finding out how much much like of a community there is for small for short filmmaking. Mm-hmm. And how many people like want to help each other with the projects yeah. because like they want to learn, they think it's fun. Uh-huh. And it like that part of it can still be disastrous, but it can also have this like really cool thing where people are like, no, I just genuinely enjoy this. That's why I'm right. here doing it. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's really cool. And there, there's a, a sort of a vibrant little scene in the Bay area there of people at least trying to make things like that. Yeah. Uh, which... And a bunch of them come out fairly good or you'll, you'll get like, yeah. you know, someone really knows how to do something well enough that it works for the whole piece. Right. <laughs> So then what so the the film comes out what did you do with it? Um I showed it around in LA. Uh-huh. And then I had it online for people to download and then I found out a lot of people didn't. They're like, "Where can I get my movie?" And I was like, <laughs> I, was, I like it was funny cuz I sent this page of options. Uh-huh. I was like, "It's available DVD. Here's the Blu-ray. Here's the like and people were like, "I don't have it." And I was like, "Why? <laughs> Why don't you have it?" Yes. So, yes. And then I'm like, it's on YouTube. And they're like, ooh, that one. I'm like, the lowest quality <laughs> yeah, option. <right. laughs> yes. So. And so did you I, did you submit to festivals and that kind of, did you do that whole gauntlet? It, I submitted to one festival. I, it went to uh, Sky Film Festival, I think. Oh, Big Sky? So, Is that the one in Montana or something? I'm not sure where it was. No, I forget I forget the type name, maybe. It was like somewhere in the southeast. Oh, Okay. And it uh it won first place for best script mm-hmm. and first place for best short film oh. when it went in and those are both right there. Oh, nice! Yes, there they are. Yeah. The prizes, yeah. nice. <laughs> All right. So, what are you working on now? Right now, now that, now that you have abandoned the Bay Area and uh, hold yourself down wanna, here to L.A., I still want to go back, but like, through, I'm like, can I get shows? And people are like, no. 
<laughs> not really. I can I could go in Santa Cruz all the time. Sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. DNA will put anybody up. Yeah. yeah. Oh thanks. <laughs> thanks. Like I have an in. No, no, no. He's he lets everybody up there. Really. <laughs> um no, I mean I go to the Bay Area a bunch like for roosters. Usually go like once a year. Okay. I guess I didn't I don't think did I go this year? Yeah, I went earlier this no. I forget. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That would be it. for those rooster tea feathers in Sunnyvale, California. Uh, run by a, a uh, owner and booker that does not like my act. Oh, yeah. <laughs> shit. I'm like, I work at this club that you can't work. <laughs> Fuck. Sorry. And so you just recorded a new special. Yes, I that. filmed it. That one was also crazy. Uh huh. We had five red cameras uh, positioned all over the room to uh-huh. get all these different shots. Nice. And then um, I helped, like, like, build some of the things for the set but we had like a really cool set designer mm-hmm. who like designed wendy docks wendy good docks she okay. designed all this stuff for it and then we just like tried to put the things together for it okay yeah so like sky put up the flats and then like she oh it was funny she inflated the unicorn for the stage <laughs> she's like this is hilarious can i inflate this and i was <laughs> like really i was like yeah sure she's like i'm taking it to the gas station because that's gonna be <laughs> That's going to be hilarious. So apparently she went to the gas station with this big inflatable unicorn. And this guy's like, what are you doing? And she's like, I'm inflating this unicorn. What does it look like, dude? Yeah. <laughs> you don't know a giant inflatable unicorn when you see it? Yeah. That's great. So when is that coming out? Uh, I'm not sure. Like, you know what's funny? Like, that's right here. Uh-huh. The suitcase computer. Uh-huh. This guy built a computer. Okay. That's the case. Interesting. All right. So it's 50% editing. Um, um, I still have to do the credits. Uh I want to do something funny for the credits. There you go. Yeah, nice. I put a whole bunch of fake credits in my last one. Oh, that's fun. That's a good idea. I put all the real credits, but interspersed a whole bunch of fake credits as well. Uh, and jokes and one-liners and like so you have to watch all the credits to get all the jokes well that's a good idea i was gonna put two like fake well not fake but two in that were goofy but they're actually kind of real uh-huh i was gonna say like uh inflatable unicorn played Uh by flady the unicorn (laughs) i named the unicorn flady i know it's really creative (laughs) and then uh the couch in it that the the set designer brought, uh-huh. she said it used to be Burt Reynolds' couch. So I thought it would be funny, like, in a special cameo by Burt Reynolds' couch. Yeah, absolutely. Old couch. Just, like, for <laughs> funny. It's got a page. You're like, okay, really? <laughs> That's so great. I feel like uh, with the nature of your act, there should be a stinger for the next Avengers movie at the end of the credits. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that would be funny. Like, if I, I'd have to see the, here I go. I'll convince my friends to come act out like a really bad <laughs> version of what that would be in front of, in you could, front of the. You could just redo the shawarma scene, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, like, I'm thinking about it. That'd be funny. I know I couldn't do it if I actually want to get it, uh, like, distributed. Oh, that's widely. true. Yeah, that's true. But yeah. maybe it could be, like, an extra thing. My right. friends wrote a scene for Avengers. Here yeah. it is. And everybody's <laughs> just, like, standing there as the characters. That'd be funny. <laughs> well, great. Well, we'll be watching for that. What's your website? Where's the best place for people to find um, it online? I would say probably right now just Twitter. Okay. Nerd Girl Comedy. Nerd Girl Comedy. Or... Um, if they want to listen to my comedy, like going on Spotify, there you go. Get those numbers up. Get those numbers up. Yeah, uh, mine too. Everybody. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, we're both on to there. Phil. Yeah, <laughs> I'm spread. Spotify has me spread across like three or four different pages. Oh, uh, really? There's Phil Johnson. There's Roadside Attraction. There's Phil Johnson and Roadside Attraction. Phil Johnson of Roadside Attraction, and I can't get them to put everything together. So all my releases are scattered all over the place. Oh, they on won't there. merge them. They won't merge them. Yeah, I, I've emailed them many, many times. And, uh, yeah, so eh, eventually. So whatever, just put in my name. You should pick and, one to post everything from now on. That's what I've been doing oh, good. lately. Yeah, once I figured out that was going to happen because I've been I've been putting stuff out under various names since before Spotify existed. So, uh, yeah, I screwed myself. <laughs> <laughs> good. All right, so Nerd Girl Comedy and on Spotify, Eric Ennis. And this has been fun. Did I miss anything? Is there anything I didn't no. ask you about? 
No, I mean that's that's all that's all good. All right, that works for me. Good, glad we got to do this. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. And there it is, friends. That is my interview with Erica Innes, comedian and filmmaker. And you can see Pool Pirates at the uh, on the show notes for this show under the crossbones dot com slash zero six three. It's about a, uh, seven or eight minutes, if I remember right, and it's very very funny. We had so much fun making this thing, um, and you get to see me drown in a swimming pool. Which was very realistic, by the way, because I don't swim well. Ha, ah, yay. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it was a blast, and the film is super funny. So make sure you go check that out under the crossbones.com slash 063. Uh, if you're listening to the show over on Pirate Radio of the Treasure Coast, you're awesome, too. And uh, thanks for hanging in there. Uh, it, we get You can hear this show, uh, the, and, the, and Under the Crossbones is sponsored by Pirate Radio of the Treasure Coast, WKKC.DB, uh, playing the best music and pirate radio talk. Pirate Radio Talk. You're not going to get that out on your average talk radio station. It's not going to happen. You can listen to this show on both the stations. Just go to PirateRadioTheTreasureCoast.com or PirateRadioTC.com, and they have apps. You can get the app so you didn't even need a radio, right? Don't forget to download the apps. Pirate Radio Treasure Coast is their music station, and Pirate Radio Talk is their talk station. And there's lots of great talk shows and music and all sorts of stuff on there. So make sure that you're listening to Pirate Radio, the Treasure Coast, because it's for pirates by pirates. Yes, and you can hear this show on there, too. Friends, I do not want you to have your identity stolen. There's all sorts of weird credit stuff and identity theft stuff. And identity theft is like the one of the biggest rising crimes in, in this country. And uh, it's a, such a drag when it happens. Like, <clears throat> maybe you... Um, you were uh, on, on the internet last Friday when the internet went down, right? And there was no Netflix, there was no Twitter, there was no Spotify, there was no Shopify. There was like things were gone, right? Well, I, that kind of stuff is going to become more prevalent, unfortunately, and the, there's a lot of reasons for it. But uh, make sure that your in, your identity is secure. It's not out in the ugly part, darks of the web, dark dark parts of the web. And here's how you do it: you get yourself a LifeLock membership. It's cheap. It's easy, and it's just kind of the cost of doing business these days. They will help you keep your identity stuff out of the dark, dark, ugly parts of the web. And if they do find it there, they will help you clean up the mess, right? And that's what your regular credit card monitoring thing doesn't doesn't do. They don't help you clean up the mess necessarily. LifeLock will help you clean up the mess. It's very easy, and you can get 10% off a membership by going to underthecrossbones.com slash LifeLock. Click the Start Your Membership button, and you will get 10% off. Uh, because uh, you're cool, because you're an Under the Crossbones listener, and that makes you awesome. I also have an ebook for you. Uh, it's Alexander Exquemelin's Pirates of Panama or Buccaneers of America, whichever uh, term you like, and uh, term, title, whichever title you like. It's a man, long weekend. Jeez. All right, and uh, here's how you get it. You go to underthecrossbones.com. You click on the free ebook button. If you've never read Pirates of Panama, it's a fantastic book. It was written during the golden age of piracy by a doctor who ended up on a pirate ship. So it's 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 of the time, man, and uh, it's a really cool book. If you're out and about and you don't want to go to the website, all you have to do is grab your little phone and text the word pirate and your email address to 94253. Just text the word pirate and your email address to 94253. Very, very simple. All right. We've got some comedy music on the show today, and since Erica is a comedian, I thought we should play some Erica in a stand-up material, right? That only seems appropriate. Now, Erica is a, a full-on nerd comic, uh, and uh, she's the nerd queen, as I called her during the interview, and uh, she actually has a bit about pirates. Uh, that makes her one of three comedians I know that has a bit about pirates. Uh, that includes me, Tim Babb, and Erica Innes. And uh, so uh, I'm going to play you Erica's pirate bit. It's very, very funny. I think you're going to dig it. So we're going to hear that in a second. And then we're going to hear some pirate music. It's all pirates today, baby. Yeah. And uh, we are going to hear a song by a new French pirate band. Uh, that's uh, They're fairly new. They've been out for a couple of years now. Barber or Room. And they contacted me uh, with uh, their new album. And uh, there's some pretty cool stuff on it. And so the song we're going to hear is Cœur de l'Océan. Uh, boy, my old high school French, not happening anymore. But uh, yeah, so brush up your high school French, because guess what? The song is in French. Yes, yes. So we're going to hear Cœur de l'Océan. Cœur de Cœur de l'Océan. Oh, man, my French teacher, my high school French teacher would not be proud of me right now. But that's what we're going to hear from Barbara Room. All right, ready? Here we go. Comedy from America Innes and music from Barbara Room. Do you guys like pirates? Good. You said woo. You're supposed to say yar. Okay, that was that was better. So I like pirates. 
Um, but I was telling my mom I like pirates and I like dressing up as a pirate, and she's like, really? You like dressing up as a pirate? So what you're saying is you like dressing up as a bloodthirsty, thieving rapist? And I was like, wow, thanks for taking the phone out of wearing a stupid hat and an eye patch. Thanks for, thanks for wrecking that. <laughs> I don't know, I don't even get why anybody would be scared of a pirate rapist with an eye patch. I'd be like, um, he has no depth perception. I would just be like, uh, you missed. Dude, you missed. <laughs> Look, you're doing this wrong. <laughs> so, yeah, it's really weird because people always say stuff about that with pirates. They're like, oh, the scariest, meanest pirate is the one with the eye patch and like the hook for a hand and like the peg leg. And I'm like, no, he clearly sucks at being a pirate. Like, he's terrible at it. Like, if he was good, he'd have the eye and he'd have all the limbs, you know? Like, if he got mad at you, that wouldn't be scary. If he comes after you, you'd hear him. He'd be like... You're like, oh, up here he comes hobbling over. He better walk away at a moderate pace. I'm like, I don't want to get cut. Oh, dear. That almost put a damper on my morning stroll, so... Sur ma solitude et mon ivresse Les affres nerfs d'une histoire est condamnée Car une princesse et un pirate ne peuvent s'aimer Quoi faut-il toujours qu'on complique les choses Que chaque pour les pirates, la vie n'est pas mon rose J'aurais pu tomber sous le charme d'une fille ordinaire Courtiser la fille du roi n'est pas une
That's our show for today, friends. Thank you once again for tuning in. If you want to find out more about Erica Innes and her uh, filmmaking and her comedy and all that kind of good stuff, go to twitter.com slash nerdgirlcomedy, and that's where you'll find her. If you want to hear more from Barbara or Room, oh, they've got a big, long Wix site URL. That's crazy. Uh, I'll link it up in the show notes so you can get it there. But just in case you are really good at listening, here it is. It's at barbaroroom31.wixsite.com slash barbaroroom. You're going to totally remember that, right? I know you are, yeah. You're out driving in your car right now, and you absolutely are going to remember that because you would not attempt to, you know, text yourself a note while you were driving, right? You would not do that. That's illegal. Don't do that. That's dangerous. So uh, I'll link that up on the show notes. Make sure you hit those show notes at underthecrossbones.com slash 063. All the links to my guests and the embedded uh, video of pool pirates which you can see right there and all sorts of other good stuff and uh keep leaving those itunes reviews i always appreciate them a nice five, five star a little compliment it uh, makes things nice if you're not subscribed uh make sure that you're subscribed through itunes or podcast addict or overcast or, or stitcher or google play or wherever you listen to podcasts we are there we're not on spotify yet still working on it but everywhere else that you listen to podcasts we are there so make sure that you're subscribed that helps our numbers and uh makes the show more popular all right thank you so much for hanging in there and i will talk to you next week we'll be right back.